Ron here from paybase.net talking about the rotary encoder based cooking timer project that I just finished. It has a few interesting aspects. The first is the user interface, how I modeled it around a single control, the clickable rotary encoder that gives a much better experience as compared to a normal cooking timer that you have to press a million times to get the time that you want. And the second aspect is the electronics and the software behind working the rotary encoder, which is very interesting. Uh, to give a good user experience and um, we'll start by looking at the user interface. Right, my timer has four major components. The rotary encoder, which this is the only thing that the user actually controls. The display, a buzzer, and three indication LEDs which we'll talk about a little later. Now, I want to allow the user to set durations, whichever you'd like, 2 hours, 27, 7 minutes with as little interaction with the timer as possible, as little motion, as little movement and clicks and such. So I modeled two <clears throat> durations, 15 minutes and 1 minute, two resolutions, and um, this allows the user to, to skip to the time that he wants and also set it very, very precisely. For example, if I'd like to set an hour 20, I turn the knob, it is in 15 minute mode, so I can reach an hour 15 very, very quickly. And then I press it once, and then set it minute by minute to an hour 20. When I want to set the timer, I simply press and hold. I get a buzzer, and it, the timer starts to count down. Um, I believe that with this, with these two resolutions, which are my decision, they could just have well been 20 minutes in one minute or 30 minutes in one minute. I believe this is the best uh, middle ground for setting resolution and uh, still incrementing by enough minutes to reduce the amount of movement of the rotary encoder to set long durations. But again, there's no right answer. It's just a thing of feel. and. Um, you can ask people and say, is this comfortable? Maybe it's good enough for you, but everybody says that it's, it's bad. Maybe this is bad, but um, this is what I believe is a good compromise. Um, the second thing that I did was, uh, because I only have one control, I really had to find special movements for it. For example, if I want to um, stop the timer, then intuitively you would just press it once, which is the, the button reacts differently according to the state that the timer is in. And now I want to clear it. So how do you clear it? I thought, okay, let's try a double click. Now double click is two very fast clicks. And, and something interesting about double clicks is that you have to postpone handling of a single click because you have to wait for the user set to see maybe it's a double click. So if you notice when I press, there is a slight delay between the press and the buzzer because I have to, again, wait a bit to say, wait, is this a single click or is this a double click? Because when I double click, there is no beep. So that's, again, something interesting in the code to see um, it's a price to pay. Uh, the second thing that I did with the timer, with the encoder, is to support my multi-timer feature. The multi-timer feature is very simple. When you are cooking, you usually cook a few things. So let's say you want to set the chicken to an hour or let's say 55 minutes. So we start that timer. And now, and now we want to set the rice. Now rice, you, you need another timer for it. So what I do today is say, okay, I have 54 minutes and the rice is 13 minutes. So I have to remember that at 41 minutes, nothing will be but I have to remember that 41 minutes I have to come and take the rice off the flame so you can buy another timer of course but here what I did was I have another two timers waiting and you switch between them by pressing you can see that when I'm in an active timer by moving the knob nothing happens again a matter, a matter of uh, state machines in the code um, but again I want to move to the yellow timer I press the, the encoder and turn Again, press, turn, and, and now I'm in the red timer. So I can, I can just switch between all the timers this way. Again, another movement for the rotary encoder. And now I have, I'm in the yellow timer. The green timer, which I set to 51 minutes, is running in the background. He doesn't care. And now I can set the yellow timer to one minute. So again, same interface, long press. And now I can also see that the timer decrements, because it's one minute, it also shows me that there, is, there are 53 seconds left. Now, 
when I am in, for example, the green timer and the yellow timer expires, or maybe even the yellow and the red timer expire, so they concurrently blink quickly, indicating that these timer have, has expired, these timers have expired, and um, I have to act accordingly. Um, that's pretty much it. I will talk about right now. I'll talk about the um, electrical work behind the rotary encoder and the software required to support it. This is the rotary encoder from SparkFun. It has five pins, two button pins, which is which behave exactly as a button, um, and the three rotation pins. Two are gray code outputs and the mill one is ground. These two things here are just for mechanical stability. Um, the gray code itself is very standard so I won't go into details but when we turn the knob then what happens is that this pin and this pin are shorted and then this pin and this pin are shorted then this pin and this pin is, are released and then this so this is a valid transaction we will see it on the scope right now now here we the scope is connected to this and this reference to ground so let's see a valid transaction i will perform one rotation and pause the scope and we will see that the first channel went down followed by the second channel then the first channel went up and the second channel went up this is the transaction that we want to um, we want to catch we want to filter out any other half transactions or invalid transaction or mechanical noise um, because this is I saw that filtering out everything else is the only acceptable user experience everything if we start to I saw I've seen implementations that simply wait for the this to, to rise and then pull the status of the other um, of the uh, other signal and then accordingly if it's one then it's a clockwise rotation if it's zero then it's it's a it's a counterclockwise rotation but this is not good enough because it does not filter out half rotation which I, which I will demonstrate in a bit what my code does is assign a number to each of these events so we have channel zero going from one to zero channel one going from 1 to 0, channel 0 going from 0 to 1, and channel 1 going from 0 to 1. So it gives this event the number 1, this event the number 2, 3, and 4. It does this and then feeds this to a state machine. The state machine looks for either 1, 2, 3, 4 for clockwise movement, or if I turn counterclockwise, let's just have one valid click, then we have two one four three so these are these are the two sequences that i look for and any other sort of sequence is filtered out that gives a good user experience um, what i want to filter against is usually half clicks so a half click is something wait a second like this when the user turns the knob but not all the way then only one channel goes down to ground and this is filtered out by the sequence because what happens here is only one and three so there's no one two three four sequence or a two one four three sequence so that's filtered out and another thing we have to filter filter out without even before even before feeding um, the one and uh, three and four and two to this to this state machine is mechanical noise the small spikes to see this we have to set the scope to pretty high resolution Let's say something like that and we already saw some noise but let me capture another one this is a very very small spike but you probably saw before that this has also risen to 5 volts so this small spike has to be filtered out I can't assume this is a logic 0 to 1 transition and then say wait this isn't in the right order and then throw this entire transaction out because again that would confuse the user he say wait I clicked 3 times and it only registered 2 times so it all boils down to that that's pretty much it um, for the uh, timer I can, um, if anyone has any, any notes or comments, feel free to drop me a line and uh, I'll be happy to read it and reply. Thanks.